So this is the last explanation to do with pearl alignment, probably the most important one. Uh, it's going to be dense. I'm hopefully going to go through this without boring everyone, but mm, it's got seven steps to it. Uh, the first thing that needs to that I need to explain is about pearls themselves, how they behave. Uh, the thing is that pearls actually have a have a hitbox that is 0 0.25 large. They're actually got a hitbox, and the most important part of the pearl is that their center uh, feet position is the position of the pearl that does all the calculations. Everything else on the hitbox has nothing to do with the actual mechanics that happens to the, uh, to the feet position. The feet position of the pearl is the one that decides where the pearl is. The feet position also determines the uh, between if the pearl travels, determines if it goes through a specific block if the hitbox goes through a specific block, nothing happens. So the hitbox is actually there and does nothing. But if the feet position goes through a block, it, it goes through a surface, it will teleport the player. And that's really important to know. And because you can influence the pearl based on its hitbox, you can uh, do stuff with the pearl using the hitbox. But if you don't let the pearl hit, get hit by the, uh, um, by the feet position, the pearl won't teleport the player. So you can move the pearl around using pistons without causing a teleport event. And if you uh, somehow zero tick a block into the, uh, into the, like if you zero tick it so that the, it, the pearl all of a sudden is inside of a block, then it won't teleport the player either because it's inhabiting a block. It needs to actually enter a new block to be able to teleport the player. That's really important to, to know about this, about the behavior of the pearl. Uh, and the pearl actually does a raycast between its position, the current position and the next position, and then it teleports the player uh, if it hits any any block, basically. And the second thing is that when you're throwing a pearl, it's being generated at the eye height of the player. And one really important thing to note is that it generates it based on the angle of the player, and the angle of the player is never 100% accurate. And it, even if you look at a very specific angle in a very specific direction, you will, n will have a really hard time replicating that specific angle. And it's never 100% accurate unless you look straight up. And that's the only time you're going to get a completely um, solid angle that it, if you look straight up. And you would expect that to be the perfect alignment for the pearl, to throw, uh, to throw the pearl looking straight up. But that's not the case. In the code, there is a randomness a scrambling, uh, um, got something called the Gaussian uh, uh, randomness that is applied to all the different uh, axes of the pearl. And it scrambles the location uh, of, or the uh, directionality of, of whatever uh, angle you're throwing. If you're throwing it straight up, it will scramble that number and it will make the pearls completely unreliable. And the last problem is that whenever you're throwing a pearl, your client is telling the server to do it. And it takes a couple of milliseconds for the package from your client to be received to, f to the server. And that number is completely random. So you don't know where the pearl, when you have thrown it, when it whenever the package arrives, or how the pearl will, pearl will behave because of the randomness of the, the extra code that, uh, that's been hard coded into Minecraft. That no those numbers, those, these random numbers need to all be eliminated. Otherwise, you can't make a reliable cannon. And this has been the problem of most parallel cannons up till now. And the thing that, uh, that basically uh, uh, test uh, discovered was to take all these randomness out of it. And the first thing you need to do is to eliminate the time, uh, time problem, the time randomness that the ping is causing. And that, that's done by using a string. And this, the string is basically getting uh, make, make, making it a server-side uh, check if this pearl has been thrown or not, taking the randomness out of time. And you can take the randomness out of the space, the, the space basically being these random vectors that, uh, that's caused by the hard-codedness of the pearl and the angle that you're throwing uh, if, you're, if you were to not look straight up. And the only way to do that is using uh, pistons. Entity squeezing is used. You, if you squeeze an entity, it's going to eliminate the uh, the acceleration of the entity, and it's going to put the entity in a specific location. And you want to do that with a pearl because you need to know where the pearl is when you're blowing up your TNT. And if that number was 
just off by even a small, small number, then you wouldn't get the pearl to go wherever you wanted to. And the most important thing to know about pearls is that they're operating in discrete steps. And discreteness basically means that they're not exactly going from one place to another place in small micro in incre increments. They're actually jumping between uh, locations. They're jumping from this location to this location and so on. And that number is based on their speed. And the speed is calculated every tick. And that number is then determining how far it will travel in the next tick. So it actually exists first in, in this location in one tick, and the next tick is actually existing in another location by being moved there. And uh, this behavior makes it really difficult to control the location of the pearl when you want to blow it up, because you have the gravity effect that always applies to the pearl. To get pearls to become basically aligned is a difficult thing because you need to bounce the pearl. And advanced bouncing techniques needs to be done to get the very accurate height of the pearl. And uh, this might make no sense to a lot of people, but to me it was the most difficult part to get the pearl to be in a really specific height because the TNT is in a specific height and the pearl needs to be in a specific height. And these numbers all uh, means that uh, at this position where, where I have found a specific pearl uh, height, the pearl will exist in this specific height after 95 ticks and because uh, it's such a small deviation from the TNT's position, it will get a perfect alignment to the, to the TNT. And this alignment, the, the vertical alignment, is impossible to control. So this is a complete draw of the lock to be able to find this, and uh, finding it through many, many experimentations. And that was, uh, that's, the, that's been the basic challenge to get the pearl to become aligned relative to the TNT. And this is how you accelerate the pearl. You need to position the pearl right next to the TNT. And the first thing needs to be understood is that the TNT and the pearl can't touch each other or the center position of the pearl can't basically enter the hitbox of the TNT because it will cause the teleport event to happen. Pearls teleport even if you hit a TNT uh, entity. And that's really important to know. So uh, you, and the, the most important thing is if you get a perfect alignment with the best possible TNT alignment, uh, you get something like 0 0.86, uh, it's a small number, about one block per tick per TNT. So you need you need to put more than one TNT in one spot. And to be able to get to put more TNT into one spot is to make sure that all the TNT is lit at the same time and they are blowing up at the same time. And you have to put them, squeeze them into together uh, and put them into one, one, uh, one singular spot and have them blow up at the, all at the same time. And that's been a really big challenge to get that, to, get, to, to be able to do that. And Methods and, and ETA has been helping out with that. And that's been a a quest to put as many TNT in the, in the same spot. And we have managed to get many TNT in there. And you saw in the video that there was about 1,040 TNT in there. And the most important thing to note is that you want the TNT to be placed at a height so that the pearl is accelerated as much towards the horizontal and not make the pearl fly up. What would happen if it flies too far up is that just you're wasting the energy that you could use to go for forward. And you want to put as much energy going forward because of the drag that is applied to the pearl. Drag reduces the speed of the pearl drastically. And that is the reason that you want to put as much of the energy into the horizontal axes, or basically the, you want to shoot it straight forward instead of just throw, shooting it upwards. And that's a really bad thing. You don't want to any, any energy towards the vertical. It also makes it really difficult to control the, uh, the pearl if it go, shoots upwards and it takes a long time for the pearl to travel to its destination. Um, and, and the last part about uh, pearls is that they're jumping in discrete steps. And an interesting part about pearl's discreteness is that it actually exists in one location and then it jumps to the next location. And it ignores every single block that, uh, or chunk that is in between. So you don't need to actually have all the chunks loaded. And this is what we discovered later. And uh, in the video you saw, it was a super laggy uh, pearl cannon because we chunk loaded everything. Everything in between the pearls, um, whenever we accelerated the pearl to its destination, we chunk loaded all the chunks. 
but you don't need to do that because the pro you, the, because the, everything is deterministic you know exactly where when the where, where the pearl is going to be in a very specific time you can actually chunk load that specific spot basically this chunk and the next uh, position it's going to be in the next tick you can actually chunk load that so you can skip a bunch of chunks so you don't need to load and reducing the amount of loaded chunks and even more cooler thing about pearls is that you can actually not load the chunks in between so you can jump from this location to this location and if there was no chunks in between that was completely unloaded nothing would happen but if you load a wall in between these two spots it's going to hit that wall so you could actually create some kind of an unloaded wall that the, the pearl will go through if it's not seeing it but if you load it using redstone or whatever uh, it's going to actually see that wall and teleport you to that wall prior to reaching the next destination so you can have a multi uh, multi-destination cannon that's going to basically be stopped by a wall if you're if the wall is being loaded or not and that's some quirky behavior that is actually happening to the pearls